This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 260 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, we're diving into why a weekly to-do list lowers your income with Jared Hanning. So I know you hear to-do lists and some of my type A go, yes, 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 yes. I'm here to tell you, well, I'm not, Jared is, that they're going to lower your income. And he's going to explain exactly why. Before you go and do that, I know that we are looking 2022. Here we are. I want to make sure that if you are feeling overwhelmed, that you go and grab my Mastering Overwhelm Blueprint. You can send me a DM on Instagram at Jenny underscore Melrose, and I will make sure to drop it to you in your DMs. If you are ready to really hit that ground running, that is the blueprint that you need for it. All right, you guys, let's dive into this. Hi, Jared. How are you? Uh, Happy to be here. I am so excited to dive into this conversation on why a weekly to-do list lowers your income. And I know my people are going, wait, what? Did you just say lowers? Yes. That's right. (laughs) You start off though, by introducing yourself and your business to my listeners. My name is Jared Hanning. I work as a mindset performance coach. Um, The difference is when you go to a life coach, they ask you questions like, oh, I don't know. What do you think you should do? The problem is what you think you should do is what has you in the situation to start with. Um, If you were to go to the gym and see a strength coach, they would not ask you what exercise you think you should do that day. They say, do two of these, do three of those, come back and see me tomorrow. All you've got to do is get your butt to the gym and you're going to leave sore with new results. And that's what I do. I bring people to the mindset gym where they do mindset (laughs) push-ups. I love the connection that you're making with that. That is great. So let's start off with what are personal blind spots? I took a look at your website. I also took your mind scan, which (gasps) totally blew my mind. Um, Yes. But let's start off with what personal blind spots are. A blind spot is a way of thinking that makes sense. And because it makes sense, it is impossible to see what it's hiding. Okay. Um, in, a, in your car, when you accidentally hit something, you don't keep backing into it. I mean, it's not like you're going to feel your way around this object by Braille. Uh, you, you get out of your car and go around and look to see what it was. If you couldn't see it in the car, backing up more isn't going to help. And by getting out of the car, it physically relocates your vantage point, allowing you to see things you couldn't see before. In life, we don't do that, though. We have a conversation, and it doesn't work. And so we get in the shower, and we say to ourselves, what I really need to do is explain it this way. And if I just explain it this way, eventually, they're really going to understand. And so we keep having the same conversation the same way, and it's not working. In life, when something doesn't work, we try harder. If we don't have enough time, we work faster. If we don't have enough income, we try to be more productive. Instead of getting out of the vehicle and seeing what we're running up against, we just try more of the same. And that is a blind spot in our thinking. Because it makes sense that this approach should work, it's impossible to realize that the approach itself is what's causing you to hit that obstacle. For example, there is um, a common thinking pattern amongst entrepreneurs that prioritizes taking massive action. The belief is action is what gets results. Therefore, it makes sense that the more action I take, the more results I'll have. Now, who is going to argue with that? That's reasonable, rational, logical, makes total sense. And it's also the blind spot that keeps them from getting anything done. So while their brain is looking for things to do and they pride themselves on checking things off their to-do list, 
it's very difficult to realize that the harder they work, the more behind they fall. And that even though they're taking massive action, they always have more on their to-do list than they have time to get done. And so there's this like conundrum, but action gets results and I'm taking lots of action. Why is it that there's always more on my to-do list than there is time to get done? It doesn't make sense, even though taking action makes sense. That is a blind spot in our thinking, a way of thinking that makes sense, that produces limited results, but obscures us to a bigger picture with what's really possible. Which makes sense that it would be a blind spot because that kind of goes against what we have always done. Like you use the fitness example before. The more time I spend in the gym doing the right things, well, I might have just corrected myself actually as I said that. I bet you I did. I can tell by your smile that I just corrected myself. Okay. So I'm hoping the listeners just heard what I did by saying doing the right things in the gym because... I'm going to guess that that's where we're going to go with this, right? Well, that gets into um, working smarter. So maybe you say to yourself, okay, okay. So there are ways of thinking that are blind spots. Like it makes so much sense that we can't conceive that that is the reason we keep hitting those obstacles. It makes so much sense. So, okay. Now that I know that that exists, what I need to do is work smarter. By golly, that's what it is. It's not working harder. It's working smarter. Ah, which brings us to the second thing. The brain can't think of what doesn't make sense. It can only think of more things that already make sense. So by trying to work smarter, you just end up doing more of what already makes sense. So if that's the blind spot that's keeping you stuck, you just end up more stuck. So there is no working harder and there is no working smarter. And that brings us to what else are you supposed to do? If you realize that your business is only one thought away from your next breakthrough, but you also realize that the brain can't think of what it can't think of. I mean, you can't read the label from the inside of the bottle. What are you supposed to do? So in the work that I do, we solve that problem with the Nobel nominated mind scan. And we print up a graph of your thinking patterns. And by getting those thinking patterns mapped out, we're able to see where the blind spot is that's been tripping you up and see where the breakthrough is that is waiting for you. And it solves all of that, takes the guesswork right out. So I already mentioned that I took the mind scan myself. And the weakness that I had, I can see how it impacts my relationships personally. But when it comes to my business, I struggle to see how it technically connects to it. And I can understand that these blind spots, I knew exactly what you're talking about with, and I'm sure listeners are shaking their head going, yes, I know what you're talking about. I do feel like I'm doing the things and I just keep banging my head against the wall because if I, like you said, work harder, it's going to pay itself off. So. If I'm looking at thinking about my mind scan, my mind scan was my weakness was something to the effect of that when it comes to other people in my life, I have difficulty showing and telling them that they are impacting me, that they are important and a big part of it. I'm not good at articulating that. Um, My husband's even worse, which is, I think, why it works. Uh, But For me then, I think, I wonder how that can impact my business considering what I do. Does that make sense? Okay. okay. So yeah, let's take a look at that. Um, You you talked about a a way of thinking and how that way of thinking solves problems based on how the other person feels. And, And we can have different things there. Like you can be really aware of how somebody's feeling but tend to discount it and prioritize other things like maybe taking action um, and for, or maybe planning or or following rules or whatever it is. Um, And so for that individual, when they are talking to somebody um, and that other person is telling their story for that individual, their brain is like, yeah, yeah, I know how you feel. I just don't care because for them, They do know how you feel and it's boring. Let's move on to something else. So there's a tendency to discount the other person's 
felt experience. Um, well, as we play with that way of thinking, it opens up a couple things. Um, when we lower that value, the value being prioritizing how the other person feels, when we lower it, it creates more friction in our business. Um, it we, we don't get referrals for the work that we're doing. If we have virtual assistants, it feels like pulling teeth to get anything done. When we sit in a meeting, it feels like other people are purposely misunderstanding us. It's just like, gosh, what is going on? Why is life taking so much effort when it comes to interfacing with other people? When we raise that value, we take that emotional intelligence that says, I understand how you're feeling, and we begin to value it. We begin to honor the other person's felt experience. Paradoxically, it opens more doors in business. People refer us to other paying, higher paying gigs. They even close the gigs for us. Um, assistants are proactively taking things off our table. Hey, can I help you with this? I saw that you needed this. Sit in business meetings. It feels like people intuitively just understand what you were trying to get at. Um, it kind of greases the gears of life and makes everything flow a lot easier. But at the same time, if we overvalue that, then it creates real problems in leadership and management because now it's very difficult to give clear feedback. Um, and people around you feel very irritated. And, and you're like, why are they irritated? I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to make them feel better. If we overvalue it, it becomes a blind spot. And we can't understand why people around us are very irritated with us when all we're doing is just trying to make them feel better. Um, and so then it starts to work against us. And that's just playing with that way of thinking, um, how other people feel. Are we undervaluing it? Are we overvaluing it? Could we value it more? And noticing the difference that makes in getting things done in our life. How would you go about finding that balance? Because if there is, like you're saying, we overvalue it and it's almost inauthentic, then they're going to be able to tell and know that it's not exactly what we would normally be thinking or saying. So how do you find that balance in you've, uh, you know, understand that this is a weakness and don't want to overcompensate? Uh, so what I would say, just balance in general, life balance in general, what I would say there is there is no balance. The only time the pendulum isn't swinging is when you're dead. What people tend to do is say, well, um, I'm I'm going to be in the middle of the road. I'm I'm going to be, you know, reasonable and rational. And everybody, everybody says this to themselves. I'm just being reasonable and rational and logical. Everybody says this to themselves. They all believe this. And the analogy is: imagine that you're on one side of the road, and you're saying to yourself, I'm going to go to the middle of the road you don't know where the middle of the road is. Right. You only know where what you think is the middle and where you're at. So that really just kind of gets you a quarter of the way. In order to know where the middle of the road is, you have to let the pendulum swing all the way to the other side. Only then do you know where the middle of the road is. So we're trying to be reasonable and rational but we're doing it based on what makes sense in our own head. And you can't think of what you can't think of. So the answer to that question ultimately is you have to physically feel it in your body. This is the bicycle analogy. Um, when you're five years old and you're learning to ride a bicycle, and, and here the example is, what do I do with how the other person feels? And should I overvalue it or undervalue it? You know, what, what's balanced look like there? This is the analogy. When you're five years old and um, they take off the training wheels, you're really wobbly. You don't have balance yet. And at the same time, you don't want to crash, right? You don't want to get hurt. And so maybe as you're thinking of, do I overvalue or undervalue? What does balance look like with getting things done? What does it look like with systems? What does it look like with relationships? Whatever it is, you know, you're in that state. Okay, I don't want to crash. I don't want to get hurt, but I don't really understand yet. Should I do more of this or less of that? Well, when you're five and they take off the training wheels, your crazy Aunt Jenny comes by with some advice. And what does crazy Aunt Jenny say? She goes, what you need to do is go faster because when you go faster, it's easier to balance. And you think to yourself, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. If I can't balance going slow, how is that going to help? That's just going to make it worse. This is why they call her crazy Aunt Jenny. Now, this is a situation that we're all in when something isn't working in our life and people come by with advice. 
or maybe you go to a motivational seminar, or maybe you read a motivational work book, and you're going to think yourself into thinking differently. This is the situation we're in. If it made sense to do, you'd already be doing it. Okay. Well, on the bicycle, one day you accidentally go faster. Maybe your, your dad pushes you a little too hard. Maybe you get distracted. Maybe you go downhill. Maybe the, the little basic balance skills are getting stronger and you're ready for bigger ones. I don't know. But notice that the instant you go faster and feel for the first time balance in your body, notice in that same instant, your brain goes, oh my gosh, now I understand. This is what crazy Aunt Jenny was talking about. Maybe she's not so crazy after all. Now I understand. Now I get it. Okay, here's the deal. Before your body felt the shift, no amount of information made a difference. After your body felt the shift, no amount of information was needed. So when it comes to balance, what does it look like? Should I do more of this? Should I do less of this? What is too much? I don't want to end up in the ditch on the other side even though you're perfectly happy being on the ditch on this side. When it comes to balance, the solution isn't thinking your way into it. You have to feel it in your body. In the work that I do, after we map out the thinking patterns, we take you to the mindset gym where we do mindset push-ups. These are effectively little bitty bicycles that your mind has to rewire itself in order to learn to ride. Okay. That analogy was perfect. So we started off talking about this. We were going to relate everything back to the idea of a to-do list because that is what we are used to always creating within our business to make sure we're getting all the things done. How are blind spots and weekly to-do lists impacting each other? And one of those blind spots is the more action I take, the more results I get. Mm -hmm. And which is why it's very difficult to notice that you've been working your face off and for the last three years, you keep telling yourself, you just need to try harder and working harder and faster doesn't ever clear up the to-do list. So one of the indications that you do have a blind spot working against you is that you keep hitting the same obstacle. Conversation with your spouse keeps ending the same way. Conversation with your virtual assistant keeps ending the same way. Conversation with your clients keeps ending the same way. That's an indication that there is a blind spot. It's not because you aren't working hard. It's not because you're not smart enough. It's just because there's something about that situation that your mind hasn't seen yet. Just like driving a car. The only time you hit something accidentally is because you didn't see it. Now let's take a look at the to-do list problem and why it's true that the less you work, the more you make. Why it's true that if you're focused on getting things done, you're actually falling behind. And why it's true that if you're checking things off your to-do list, you're actually lowering your income. I know that sounds blasphemous, but let's take a look at what's going on. One, by being focused on getting things done, your value is in the present. What can I get done today? And doing a task doesn't address the reason it needed to be done. And so tomorrow that task is still going to be there and you'll still have to do it. Uh, returning emails today doesn't keep me from having to return emails tomorrow. However, if instead of returning my emails, I, I go back and look through all my emails for the month, I write down the top three questions I've gotten, I write down the top three answers I tend to give, I write through around a couple of three categories that don't fall into either of those, and then I go through my assistants or virtual assistants, or maybe I look to find a new one, or I ask a friend for a new one, or I go to Fiverr or whatever and start to you know, prospect and meet new ones. Now I spent 30 minutes doing that. And during that 30 minutes, I didn't return any emails. However, I will never again have to return emails. So by trading the long-term result for the immediate gratification, that little dopamine hit of that little check, I'm actually getting way more done. Okay, now let's look at the income situation. Why does checking things off your to-do list lower your income? Well, take a look at your to-do list. Look at everything on there. I got to schedule this and reschedule that and get this contract in the mail and renegotiate that and let the client know about this and put an offer on this and review the ads for this and blah, 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 blah. I bet that there is nothing on your to-do list 
that could not be delegated for $15 an hour, provided it was the right person for that task and they were trained with the right system to follow. What that means is the more you're focused on checking things off your to-do list, the more of your energy is going to the lowest paying thing available, which is kind of like what we call the booby prize. Look at all the stuff I checked off. Congratulations. Here's your plastic trinket. Yes. And I think my listeners need to hear this because I think one of the biggest pushbacks I get is when they go to hire, they know they need to build their team because they feel like they're running around with their heads cut off, trying to do all the things as a solopreneur Mm -hmm. that it takes longer though, Jenny, to train them. And then I end up further behind because I had to take all that time to train them instead of able to check things off my to-do list. But that way that you gave that analogy of being able to never have to do those tasks again once you find that right person that's going to be able to step into your business that way makes all the difference. Talk to me about your mind scan that you actually offer. What does it do? It was so I took it obviously I already had mentioned that and it was like your normal personality test. Um it was a little different and I was kind of when I looked at it I was like wait what is this? Um will you talk a little bit about it? Yes. um, Probably one of the biggest things that people say after completing the mind scan is, did I do it right? It feels unlike any other assessment. Um, People are used to taking assessments because DISC, Myers-Briggs, Strength Finder, Enneagram, whatever it is. And that's what they're used to. But the thing with those types of tools um, is that, well, they're questionnaire based. Because they're questionnaire based, your subconscious is gaming the system. There's no way around this. And what that means is you go see the doctor, the doctor walks into your room, but they're carrying somebody else's test results. Now, that wouldn't be very helpful. The second thing is they tend to be population personality comparisons. Um, So they say you have uh, these traits and 25% of the population has these traits. Well, that's interesting information, but it's not helpful. Uh, If you went to see the doctor and he said, you have this condition and 25% of the population has it, you don't care. You want to know what side of that line you're on. The mind scan isn't a questionnaire. Uh, You're not responding to questions, so your subconscious can't game the system. Um, It's not a comparison. It's a scientific measurement of you, the individual, how your mind makes sense of the world. Because of that, your map is a fingerprint as unique as you are of your thinking patterns. Um, And lastly, because of the way it displays it, not only is it the most accurate thing possible, I mean, it's Nobel nominated for a reason, uh, but that map, while it reveals your blind spots, while it reveals the, the thing in your vehicle that was blocking what you ran into, Um, While it reveals that, it also reveals your strengths that are your key to never running into that again. Um, It reveals sort of a a, a map, if you will. Do this this afternoon, do this tomorrow morning, and you're out of the weeds. You're back on the beaten path. You can run free. Okay. Yes. And is there specific kind of things that it looks to uncover as far as when you're doing the scan? Because I know I like rank things from like most important to me to least important to me. And they were phrases. Um, Is it looking to uncover things just based on personality? Um, Well, I wouldn't say personality. Um, I would say values. Values is the word I would use. Uh, So it, it is asking you to tease out what you think is good and what you think is bad. And that's really hard to do. But how you do it is as unique as you are. Uh, For example, um, I'm just pick some items in that list. Um, A baby is one of the items. And another one we'll say is a technical improvement. And it's asking you to say, which one of these do you think is more morally good in the world? Well, gosh, they're both good. But for you... One of them is slightly more good for reasons as unique as you are. 
Um, some individuals will say, well, the baby is more good than a technical improvement because um, this is the infinite worth of a human being. It can't possibly be measured. There is nothing more good in the world than that. Other people would say, well, but we don't know what the baby's going to do, a technical improvement, unless we know that good has happened. And because this is a systematic long-term efficiency, this is more good. The baby is just untapped potential, but the technical improvement is realized potential. Um, other people might say, yes, but it's a technical improvement. And we don't know what it was an improvement to. It could have been an improvement to an evil system. So that is in question. I'm going to put that lower down. The baby is untapped potential in my optimism and the goodness of humanity, even though it's untapped potential also is going to go up higher. So, I mean, you can imagine just how unique that gets for the individual. And then when you stack 18 of those, there is nothing else that looks like you do. Right. And I think that was part of the thought process is when I saw the things I was looking at, I'm going, what did that could be this or this, but just exactly what you did kind of trying to see both sides and then just going with a gut feeling of what should be better or worse. So the mind scan that you offer, is it something that my listeners would be able to hop over and take? Uh, I, I would, yes, please. Um, and what I would say is, don't believe anything I've said. Don't take my word for it. Try the mind scan for yourself and see if you think what it reveals is a good fit for the way you do business. Yes. And we're going to link to that in the show notes so they can make sure that they take that. I would highly recommend it. Um, it was almost eerie when the results came through my email and I saw it and I just immediately forwarded it to the friend that I knew was going to say, oh, this makes so much sense. It makes me feel better that you don't hate me. <laughs> um, so definitely make sure that you guys take advantage of that. Jared, where are the best places to actually connect with you? Uh, the Book of Faces, um, Jared Hanning, um, or facebook.com slash Hanning. Um, the website, mindsetperformance.co. Uh, check out the podcast. Uh, get the executive summary for the book. Um, try the mind scan for yourself. Um, that's probably it. Uh, I am on LinkedIn, but not very active. So that's not really a good place to reach out to me. Yeah, my people aren't there anyways. My listeners are going to go, no, they're not there anyways. Um, they will definitely probably check you out. My guest would be Facebook. and definitely on the website to do the scan. So I am excited about the hearing about their results. So I hope when you guys listening, take that. Um, you can always tag me on Instagram at Jenny underscore Melrose and talk to me about it. I want to know if it blew, blew your mind like it blew mine. Um, Jared, I appreciate you so much for taking the time to speak with me and my audience and for offering the mind scan for them. Yes. Thanks for coming by. It's great to chat. All right. Well, there you have it. I hope that you guys take advantage of that mind scan that he is offering. It really, truly blew my mind. I was not making it up that I said I forwarded it almost immediately when I saw it over to the friend that I know we've had issues because of what my weaknesses are. So you can use that and in order to move your business forward. Again, if you are looking for that Mastering Your Overwhelm Blueprint, just send me a DM on Instagram at Jenny underscore Melrose, and I will make sure to drop that in for you. And as always, thank you all so much for those that have left me a rating and review. I appreciate it. It helps to get great guests to come on to the show. So if you haven't already left a rating and review on your favorite podcasting app, I would so appreciate it if you did. All right, guys, until next time, I will see you all then.